Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Techie Entertainment, where today we will be messing with the TV you are currently looking at. We will be adding a battery to it and bringing it to different places to show that the battery works. Let's start with making it battery powered. So, this is the TV. It's a Quasar monitor from November 1984 and it's a small compact 5.5 inch display and I'm gonna be adding a battery to it. I need to go get that battery. There's the battery. It's a 12 volt lead acid battery and I just so happen to have this plug right here, which if you don't know what this is, this is a car jack plug. So it's receiving direct 12 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to splice the wires and make it all nice and then put contacts on there and stuff so we can have the battery behind. So I can have the battery about like right here mounted on it and then the contacts are directly connected. And then it's one small compact unit. Alright, so a bit of progress has been made. I got these two pieces which go directly onto the battery and I'm just going to get some better wire because that's not thick enough. And I took apart the existing, um, and I took apart the existing, uh, car jack to see how it's made and what material and to see if there's any special circuitry and there doesn't appear to be so that's gonna make this a lot easier and so center is always uh, pretty sure that center is negative and the outside is always positive but I'm um, because that's that's how this is wired up but that doesn't seem right because you would have the fuse on the positive side. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have to um, figure out why this is. So here's. Here's my cable. This goes directly to the TV. I'm gonna use my power supply right here to figure out what um, polarity this thing goes in. Hopefully it has some sort of circuit protection where if I put it in the wrong way then it won't um, explode. Now, I'm gonna look it up real quick, but I'm pretty sure the outside, which would be this part right here, is negative. So I'm gonna look that up. Yeah, so according to my speculation, this should be negative. So the way this is wired up, which is kind of weird, is that the wire with the white strip was going to negative and the and the color that's supposed that's black that doesn't have any stripes is going to positive. And normally it's switched, but I guess that if that's that's how it works that's how it works so I'm gonna plug this in and test it and if it works then I can test it with the battery so I know the thing runs on f about 5 or 10 volts so I am hearing I am hearing high voltage I am hearing high voltage so if we go to static and we get static that is good so that means I have it I have now figured out which cable or what what wire is actually the um negative and positive. So there's a couple more things I need to do. One of them is obviously cut this this wire is gonna be a lot shorter, but I need to add a fuse to it. I need to um add these these connections to it probably like that I'm gonna figure out some way to solder them and some more some heat shrinking and that will be it so I need to get on that 
But first, we're just gonna test it with the battery itself. Wait, goes. Whoa, why is this on? <laughs> I just saw that little mini spark. That was nice. All right, okay. I'm just gonna hold it here, but the TV should work. Yeah. High voltage, I hear high voltage and we got static. There we go. And it works, so let's just disconnect that and let's make this into a real, a real thing. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I was recording and the, uh, my shutter speed was at 50 because that's what I was using to make it so that the TV wouldn't have any banding on it. So basically I was just recording the whole thing in 50 frames per second instead of 60. So I changed that. Now it should be a lot smoother. The video should be. So, okay, so we only need this cable to be around like that long because it's got to go from like here to here. So, yeah, let's just cut it. So, uh, like, make sure we got enough. Boom. I can always add more if we need some. We should be fine. So, I'm going to mark this because it's extremely confusing that the white band is negative and the black band is positive. Normally, again, like I said, normally it's the other way around. That's what the white wire generally uh, specifies, is that whenever you see the white wire, it's supposed to be positive. I don't know why they did this that way, but they did. So, that's great. That's where we're going to mount this to it, and this, and here's our fuse, which I need to mount that somewhere like right here or something, and we're, gonna, we're probably going to end up soldering it and using this nice nifty um, heat shrink right here, because now I have heat shrink, which is awesome. Alright, so, oh, this goes to the positive, okay. So it's going to be on that side. Alright. So I'm just going to cut this right here. We'll add that on later to one end. So we're going to cut this right here. Wait. Um, that's that end, and then this is the other end. This part we don't need, this part, these two parts we do, so then I'm going to basically just solder it like that and put heat shrink over it. It's going to look all nice. Now I need to get soldering supplies and solder that together. Should be using wire cutters. This is like kind of heavy gauge wire, so should have been using this. So I think I'm going to put it like that. Yeah. Alright, so... Like that. That'll go up. There. So I'm going to solder these together. I thought I forgot to put the heat shrink on, but I can just put that on later. Now what this fuse does is it makes sure... Oh crap. I didn't even know that was possible. Look at what I did. I blew a hole through the actual fuse. 
Now I have a bunch more fuses, but still I never I've never seen that that happen, just blowing a hole through the fuse and then putting solder in it. That's interesting. Alright. Well dang it. Could have been done. It looked really nice though. So I managed to find a 9 amp fuse, which should be fine because uh, the other fuse I had was 10 amps and this only draws um, 100, uh, this only draws a maximum of like 2 amps at maximum um, power usage. So when I use, if I use this it shouldn't blow and this should be fine and if there's something goes wrong and this thing shorts this will go out so that's fine. Now I just need to make sure to not weirdly solder this thing again and make sure that it doesn't blow up. Should be okay because this is actually made differently so you know what actually I should test to see if this fuse is blown. That's a good idea. So let me make sure I'm not, my, my fingers aren't interfering. Alright, so it's good. Alright, so the fuse doesn't seem to be wanting to be soldered to, so I'm gonna rough up the edges and hope that's the case. If this thing doesn't work, I'm probably just going to not add a fuse to it because this TV has lasted nearly 30 years now, so I doubt that it should it, 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 it would actually break and cause a short. There we go. That's a nice solder job. Oh crap, no, I moved it. Dang it, that was the stupidest thing I've ever done. <laughs> There's my joint right there. Now it's time to do the other one, which, where'd my wire go? There it is. So yeah. Now actually the measurements are gonna be off, so one side's gonna be longer than the other, but that's okay. I can just cut the longer side. Alright, so unfortunately my camera turned off, but this is what I did. So I soldered it, and you would have noticed if you actually saw it, but there's like some solder coming out of the actual fuse, and I think that's the part that has the this little um, like wire connects to each side with solder. So I think I actually melted some of the solder inside. So. So here's the end result, and it looks pretty nice. Heat shrink really is amazing, once you know how to use it. Alright, so I guess the final step for the electrical side of this is I need to add these two to the ends of there. Now obviously I'd like to use, I'm going to use the original cable because this is way too long and also it's too thin so I'm just going to have to cut this, make this a bit bigger so it can actually fit like a thick cable, a thicker cable into it. And uh, yeah, so got to get on to that. Alright, so my camera keeps deciding to die and I should really be checking it and I didn't, get, I didn't so... It, it, we lost a lot. I lost a lot of footage, so I'm gonna show you what I actually did. So under here is the big thick cable, basically connected to right there, and everything's just heat shrinked, and I have it on there. So I did the positive side. Now I got to do the negative side. I'll basically show you exactly what I did, but this time it'll be on the negative side.
Alright, and now I need to get some of this, figure out what length I already did. First off. And then cut it. So here we go. That goes on like that. one cable done. So now I need to test it, which is the scary part. Now this is pretty scary because if this thing blows up, then that's scary. If it doesn't work, that means I did something wrong and I gotta fix it. And if it does work, that's awesome. But <laughs> kind of unlikely, I feel, for it to work first time. Alright, so I don't actually know which side you're supposed to plug in first. I always do positive and then negative, but I think it's supposed to be the other way around. I don't know. That's probably something I should look up, but it doesn't really matter. So let's turn on the TV. Boom! I hear high voltage, and we got static. Yeah, that's awesome. So see, this is what I was talking about. I had it at, I had the refresh rate at 50. 50. So there we go. Screen's all nice. And we are getting signal.